All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. First of all, I just wanted to spend a quick moment here to thank all of you for the amazing support and kind words that you left in my last video, Games I Bought Recently, episode 39. It had been quite a long time since I had made one of those types of videos, and I was kind of just blown away by just the sheer amount of amazing comments, kind comments, you know, everybody getting nostalgic over the old days of YouTube videos and, you know, the sort of style that I had of just, you know, showing the boxes, talking about games, and uh, especially the people that left comments telling me how, you know, I inspired them to get into game collecting and how they started watching them when they were 12 and now they're, like, married w with kids and everything. Like, it's kind of crazy stuff, right? Uh, and it just meant a lot to me, and all of your comments helped uh, inspire me to want to spend the time to edit this video for you because I figured you'd all enjoy it, especially because there were so many comments of people asking for longer videos. Well, guess what? This video here is the longest one that I have ever uploaded to YouTube, so I hope you all enjoy. Hope you got your headphones ready because this is some good ASMR material material for those of you that are into this kind of stuff. So I just wanted to also spend a little bit of time kind of just touching on a few things about this because I didn't want to just jump into it with any kind, without any kind of intro, otherwise some people might be confused. So first of all, this is going to be um, edited footage of a stream on Twitch that I did from July 2019. So this is not something that I just sat down and recorded strictly for YouTube, but I had really you know, almost a year had passed since I don't, had did this, so I didn't really have any intentions of ever getting around to editing it and sharing it with you guys, but here we are. Uh, took me a bit to put this together, but basically what this is, it's a stream I did where I unboxed 50 packages. And some of you may remember I became pretty well known back in the day for people just watching, you know, enjoying watching me opening packages in a video. Like, oh, here's a few packages. I'm not going to tell you what's inside. Let's open them. And oh, there it is. For whatever reason, people love that stuff. One of my most popular videos was a box that I had sitting around for two years. And I unboxed it in a video and people just like ate it up because I kind of forgot what was inside. Well, guess what? Most of the packages in this video are about one or two years old. They've been sitting around for a bit. The oldest package that you're going to see in this video is not two, it's not four, almost six years old. I have a package I'm going to unbox, and I forgot what was inside, and let me tell you, it was um, quite the surprise. Make sure not to read the comments and nobody spoils it for you, in case you want to be surprised along with me. Uh, so because this was a stream and because it was done in July and during the like it was really hot uh, the first five minutes of the video are going to have some audio issues because I had a noise gate on and I had my air conditioner on so like you'll, you'll hear the noise cutting in and out that goes away after a few minutes I do apologize for that and then for the rest of the video I just have no noise gate which does mean that you're going to hear my air conditioner in the background uh i couldn't really edit it out without destroying the audio i do apologize for that but my health of staying in a hot room in july was way more important with my air conditioner than not having it on and because this was originally you know recorded on my stream you're going to see notifications pop up once in a while or hear me mention somebody's name i tried to cut out and mitigate as much of that as possible so it wasn't so confusing because you won't have the the live chat for context so don't worry i've edited it in such a way that you're not going to hear me constantly mentioning people's names or replying to questions that you can't see um one other thing I wanted to address also is the fact that a lot of the stuff that I bought here, I was preemptively buying many months in advance because I had planned on uh, and went to a retro, local retro game convention to sell in person at my own booth. And a lot of the stuff that I was buying, I bought months, many months prior, so that way I'd have a nice selection of things to sort of as eye candies to catch people's eyes so they'd come over to my booth and check out what I had. So a lot of the lots that I buy where it's like multiples of games, I'd keep some of it for my own collection to play, and then some of it I would bring to my booth to sell, and I did really well there. You know, I sold a lot of stuff, and uh, so if you're wondering, like, why is he buying all this? It seems excessive. He's never going to play all that. You're right. I'm never going to play all that. That's why a lot of it was sort of to, to help sell. And man, do I love selling at retro game conventions. It's so much fun. Um, the other thing that I wanted to address as well is, like, people are probably going to be wondering, why? How, how does this happen? How does somebody accumulate so many packages? Well, the packages that I bought that weren't meant for the convention had just kind of accumulated, you know. Um, a lot of times when I get something in the mail, I knew what it was, and I'm like, well, I don't need to open this right now, and then I'd kind of just stick it off to the side because I knew what it was. I didn't need it immediately, and that'll make sense to a lot of people once you see some of this stuff I open up. And it just started piling up and piling up, and then I started saying to myself, well, maybe I'll save it for a mystery unboxing on stream or a YouTube video one day, and it just kept piling up and piling up, and here we are. At least it's going to make good entertainment for you. <laughs> At least I hope so. Um, and a lot of you are probably wondering, like, well, what about checking it and making sure everything works? You know, what about 
making sure if it's defective you can send it back well i'm not a fussy person i really am not even if i get something that doesn't quite match the description or is like in really poor condition as long as it works i'm not fussy uh, in fact most of the time everything i buy i get for such a good deal that it doesn't even make sense for me to send it back because the deal was so good that i just kind of want to keep it anyway so even if it doesn't match the description or it isn't in the best of condition or there's something wrong it's usually not me worth sending back because a it's either really rare and i'll never see it again or b the deal was so amazing that i kind of don't want to get rid of you know send it back because i got such, such a good price on it and uh, usually i'm such, i'm usually nice enough anyway just to leave a feedback for for fast uh, shipping and regardless of the condition it's really not the biggest deal for me um, i did also leave this you know even though i edited it i took a lot of like dead time out where I'd, I'd be cleaning up packages or not saying anything you know i'd edit a lot of that out but i did try to preserve a lot of the um what made it so much fun to for a lot of people to listen to i have a lot of great unboxing asmr so there's going to be a lot of audio of me opening boxes bubble wrap all kinds of fun stuff so i tried to preserve a lot of that so it's not just like rapid fire cuts to me just talking there's a lot of, a lot of nice empty rooms so this is going to be a good video for those of you that are looking for content to, to fall asleep to um the only thing that i really edited everything is in the order that it was originally streamed in and that does mean that it doesn't mean i'm going to start with the best stuff and leave the worst for last it's kind of in a random order so if you don't really care for the thing that i'm currently unboxing just skip ahead and maybe you'll find a different package that's more interesting to you the one thing i did edit there is a group of packages that i open up from when i was in japan for many many years ago i had bought the stuff never opened it and i uh, unbox it in this video I cut that stuff out and put it at the very end of the video so like the final 20 minutes for those of you that are not interested in that at all you know the first entirety of the video is going to be gaming and then that final half will be the stuff that is not gaming related so if you're not interested you don't got to watch it last thing I wanted to remind you guys is that uh, for those of you that are like oh I haven't seen your videos for years well that's because I stream full-time now on twitch and I do a lot of content like this on twitch I don't just sit there and stream games every every time I stream, I do a lot of content that is collecting related, whether it's unboxings or uh, I do my eBay game hunting streams on Twitch now exclusively because I play music in the background and can't quite put that on YouTube. I currently am doing that once a week. So I do my eBay game hunting streams where we browse eBay and kind of look through there and just f find all kinds of crazy stuff. You're welcome to join us. Uh, you know, besides that, we do a lot of other stuff like wishlist making. We watch content of like every single game for a particular system, make a list of the games that we're looking forward to. We, we watch all kinds of fun stuff and do all kinds of fun stuff together that is not just strictly me just sitting there playing a game and people watch you're welcome to join very welcoming community you don't even have to say hello you're just welcome to stop by and lurk and hang out and never say a word and just enjoy the content i'll have a link to my twitch stream down below but it is twitch.tv slash pete door and i hope to see some of you there in the future anyway i hope you enjoy the video and i'll see you guys in the next one hopefully enjoy so welcome everybody we're going to be opening 50 packages today, by the way. Um, yeah, I got a few packages here. You may have heard of the art of opening packages, but perhaps you've never heard of what I'm going to invent as the new meta. Uh, letting packages sit around for at least a year, so that way when you open them, you don't know what's inside. I figured... If I helped popularize, you know, people getting excited over watching me open brown boxes on YouTube years ago, we might as well create the new meta for box openings. I guess we'll start, right? Um, I've got scissors. These ones look pretty good, honestly. These are pretty heavy-duty scissors. Perhaps a little too heavy. Got a super heavy-duty razor knife. Yeah, let's begin. Some of these, just a disclosure, I have no idea what's uh what's in some of these some of them i do know what's inside because i kind of just remember based on the box you know i get to i, I grow an attachment to these boxes that you know after you spend so many years with them you develop relationships and it's going to be interesting to cut them open it's like saying goodbye to an old friend but let's start with this one this one i'm a little worried about to be honest with you uh, i have to also be really careful not to uh show any information on the webcam so sometimes you're going to see a lot of this like off the webcam as I hide it because I didn't block any of this stuff out. Really flimsy box. You can actually hear it. Oh boy. And the fact that I know what's in here is a little scary. Uh, a little worried about this one to be honest with you. 
I hope it survived. I mean, it's a little a little crunchy here, if you see. It's... oh boy. We'll start with a bang, I suppose. This is not a video game, by the way, but it is game-related. Okay, interesting. I'm very, very interested why this person thought this would be a, a good way to pack this, but being what it is, it's like, it's either going to get damaged or not, so there's nothing I can do about it. It's not something I'd want to return either, because it is quite rare. It's got a little, little dent in it, but no big deal. I could probably pop that out if I'm careful. Not the, not the smartest way. I mean, if you guys are ever going to ship... If you, if you guys are ever going to ship a soda can, you may not want to pack it in a paper box. Like a flimsy paper box. I'll hopefully be able to salvage some of this. But either way... Sonic the Hedgehog Fanta Orange Soda. As you can see, it did not survive the trip, but I kind of expected that the second I saw the box. But I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm not returning it because it's super freaking rare. Uh, it is n it, it is sealed on top, but it's drained of the soda, which is good because I don't want that busting open in the middle of the summer or something. Really rare. There's another. There's another flavor. There's an orange flavor. Uh, that fortunately I could not acquire. So that's going in the Sonic collection. You're going to see quite a few Sonic things in these boxes, by the way. Uh, let me store this somewhere where it's not going to get crushed. Okay, and there's something else in here as well. We have something else Sonic related. Because if you guys didn't know, I collect Sonic stuff. And it is very rare for me to find something that I don't have. We have this little Sonic topsy-turvy... Kind of like... Playing set? Sonic Duel? New in the package. Well, it's missing an insert to keep some of these things in place, but this is super rare to find in the box. Uh, and both of these things were a really fair deal, so I had to jump on them. Let's see if I can take this out here and show you what it is. Oh, those are cute. Here's the teeny tiny little Sonic spinners. Um, and then you have these little shooter things that you can then put in this little carrying case. And then you fold it over and then I guess you play with them on a table or like on top of this thing. I have no freaking idea. Something I mean look at this look at this box, right? Would you guys would you guys ship a empty soda can in this? I mean, let's be real here, right? This one is padded quite nicely. Envelope with a box inside which tells me it's probably something of value. Oh, well, they spoiled the surprise. They actually wrote on this box what's inside of here. It is a Game Boy Color game that I kind of forgot I ordered. When was this from? This was from December 2018. So we have, let's see if any of you can make out what this is as I take off the wrapping. Land Before Time on the Game Boy Color. This is a platformer that looks kind of similar to the Game Boy Advance version, except it has probably way better graphics, I would hope. I mean, better music. And it's got some nice sky hype in it as well. So let's find out what's in this kind of hefty nook box here. Um, this one is pretty recent. This is May of this year. Here, let me, let me turn off my mic gating so that you guys get every, every sound. Which means it's gonna pick up my air conditioner right up against that mic. Just try not to cut my freaking uh, chest. It's a pretty big razor blade, so I gotta be careful not to pierce anything in here. Ooh, fancy. Packing a box within a box with padding. <laughs> Another Nook box, by the way. It's like those, uh, what, what are those Russian doll toys where it's like, it's a toy within a toy within a toy. I wonder if there's another box inside of here. Tons of paper wrap. But um, I'll be selling at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo in New York, 
So some of the things I'm picking up here uh, were specifically for selling at that convention, if I managed to get a super good deal on something. Uh, some things I would keep from my collection, kind of like gut them out in a way, where like if, if it's a better condition than the one I have in my collection, swap out some stuff, you know, improve the condition of my own copies, and then sell the ones that I don't really need. So this here is one of those boxes. Um, I probably got a crazy deal on this, because I typically don't buy these kind of things unless it's worth it for me to make a decent profit on. Uh, we're starting off with Final Fantasy Anthology Black Label. This has everything inside of it. These are usually not too desirable or pricey, but um, they still sell. They sell really easily, Final Fantasy games, Final Fantasy Origins, Black Label. Greatest Hits, Final Fantasy VIII, which I question how desirable Final Fantasy VIII will be with the remaster announcement. Perhaps even more, I, I don't really know. Maybe it'll bring more awareness to the game. And I can foresee Final Fantasy VII. I've, I've already seen the price going up on this. Like, it was kind of hovering around 30 to 40 40 on the high end, but since the remake announcement, they're definitely averaging closer to 40 plus now because of the remaster or the remake. Uh, so get these while you can, while they're still relatively cheap. Black Label Final Fantasy 7. I mean 9. And Collectors, but I don't even own this myself, but I'll probably still get rid of it. Final Fantasy 10, 10, 2 HD remaster and PS3. I don't own this version of it. I didn't even know that they had a slipcover version of this. So there's some some fodder for the table. RPGs sell. If anything, it, it's eye candy. It'll catch people's attention when they see a table filled with RPGs, so it's always a good thing. Alright, here's a cute little box. I have absolutely no idea what's in here. This is from May of 2017. So, yeah. I have no clue. No idea. It's fragile, apparently. Here, I'll, I'll get the I'll get the picture of the cute little little box here for you guys. Because normally it's out of frame. Wristwatch, actually not a bad guess. Uh, I would imagine something this small is probably Sonic or related or something. I I have no idea. Um, maybe it's something I can't even show on stream. Who knows? Sonic ornament. Ooh, good guess. Oh, man, you know, I couldn't remember, I couldn't remember if I bought this freaking game or not. Well, that answers my question. Um, also, you're going to see probably a few Game Boy Color games in here, because I'm also, life-term goal is to collect a full, complete, and box Game Boy Color collection. And here's one of them. Oh my god, this game is, I'm pretty sure this game is pretty valuable now. This has definitely gone up in price since I bought it. Um, Batman. Chaos and Gotham. Yeah, this is this is definitely getting more pricey. Batman games are going kind of crazy right now. Here's something from May of 2017. Actually, the same day. I got both of these things in the mail the same day. Some of these might be from Amazon. Um, some stuff is definitely not from eBay. What's the story of these piling up? Um, usually what would happen is I'd get stuff in the mail and I'd be like, Oh, I know what that is. I don't need to open that right now. And then I just kind of put it off to the side, and they kind of just piled up. I had to go searching for some of them. I, I forgot where I even put them, to be honest. And of course, it's good entertainment, and it's fun this way. Like, seriously. It's like Christmas. I don't even know what's in these boxes. I forget some of the shit that I buy. So that's exciting. Alright, let's see what we've got in here. Probably another Game Boy Color game that I forgot I even bought. Nice, fancy green bubble wrap. Hold on for you. People craving your ASMR, hold on. Man, you can even hear the birds chirping in the background? Christ. I'll have to be careful. It's not a bad pop. It's aged, so it's not, not the greatest. Oh, okay. I may actually have a double of this game by this point. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Alright, where's my scissors? Or my razor? Spoilers, it's another Game Boy Color game. <sighs> Collected Game Boy Color while I could, while the prices were super freaking cheap. So, I made a good decision. We have...
I love the Game Boy Color games with the shiny spines. Looney Tunes Carrot Crazy. Love the shiny spine Game Boy Color games. I will always get the shiny spine variant if there is one between two versions. Um, Carrot Crazy is a platformer. It's pretty uncommon. It's not Crazy Castle. There's quite a few Looney Tunes and like Bugs Bunny games and stuff in general in Game Boy Color, so it gets really confusing. Excuse me, really confusing, really fast. It's kind of hard to keep up. I still have room for box games. Um, most of them are going in bins right now. This one is Christmas of last year, December 2018. Double enveloped. This person knows what's up. That means it's probably also something quite desirable. I might have an idea of what this is. I don't know if this is the one. I might have chosen the Holy Grail right off the bat. We'll find out. There's a specific game I bought once because I had like some crazy eBay coupon. And it just made sense to get it then and there. Because I needed it eventually. Oh my god. This one is... This one's packaged pretty heavily. Why didn't I open them before? So I can share it with all of you today. We wouldn't have this stream if I didn't wait and have patience. Alright, I'm just gonna whip it out right now. I don't know what it is. I don't know if this is the correct side or not. Alright, that's not the Holy Grail. It's zombie dinos for the CDI. But, it is somewhat of a Holy Grail. I forgot I even bought this. Somewhat of a Holy Grail because the jewel case version of this is actually quite rare. Um, normally you find this game in the long box only. But the jewel case variant is pretty hard to find, so that's why I bought it. Uh, and the reason why it's super rare, wow, this came from Blockbuster for 1999. Uh, it's the English variant. This is not, like, the Netherlands copy or something. It's the English jewel case variant. Very rare. So, that's going in the CDI collection. Ooh, listen, this is a good scissor for this mic. Ooh, that's, that's good. It's a real crunchy, crunchy scissor. All right, let's just whip this one out too. I don't know what, oh, it's an Xbox? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I see what this is. Yeah, so not too exciting, but I need this for the day that I eventually get an Xbox One X. 360 version of Final Fantasy 13. Reasons being the Xbox One X version of playing this on an Xbox One X of 13 is actually probably the definitive version of Final Fantasy 13. And I didn't own it on 360 because when 13 came out, um, I bought it on PS3, like most people did. PC? Nope. Xbox One X. Cutscenes destroy PC cutscenes in 13 now, in case you didn't know. Uh, you just don't return the packages. I'm not, I'm really not a fussy person. Typically, if I get something that is in poor condition or didn't quite meet the description, I'm okay with it. I just keep it. Because normally, if I buy something, it's a good price anyway. So, I, I very rarely ever raise any fuss or problems or returns. I usually just keep it. It's not even worth the trouble for me. Oh, shit. Oh, man, I forgot I bought this. Ooh, this is this is a steal I got on this. So I can't decide if I'm going to keep this, if the price is going to continue to go insane, or if I should sell it while I can. Um, but I got an insane deal on this. Like, completely sniped this shit. I think I was up at, like, 5, 6, 7 in the morning, and I just went on eBay randomly and searched for completing box games. And this was on there for under half the price that it's normally going for right now. That is a complete near mint. It's got a little dent in one corner and a couple little dings here and there, but for what the box is, it's really good. Pokemon Crystal for Game Boy Color. Um, I never own Crystal personally, but this is by far one of the most expensive Game Boy Color games complete in the box right now. Uh, this is going for anywhere over $300 in good condition uh, complete instances. And I got this for way, way, way under that. The person didn't understand, or I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they were selling this for the price they were, but it was a instant buy for me. I don't even think I gave myself a time to read the description because I was afraid of people snatching it. I just looked at the photos, I was like, buy. I knew it was real, I can tell from the cart. Especially if they have the box and the manuals and all that too. It's very easy to tell if it's real or fake. So now I've got to decide, because eventually I need a, a full Game Boy Color collection, and I would need this game, but I have no interest in it at the moment. 
So I might sell it now because I feel like I feel like the price on this will eventually come down. I don't, I don't think this is going to go for 300 plus forever. Um, I'll have to see. I'll bring it to the show. If someone wants to pay me a premium for it, so be it. I will gladly take it. I'll take it. Okay, we've got something else from December of last year. It's fragile. Weighs a pound and seven ounces. Hmm. Not sure on this one, to be honest with you. Oh, is this more... Oh, we got more Game Boy Color games. Let's see. They pack them very nicely, actually. They can rattle around in here a little bit. You can see here. There's some space. Oh, well, rip. Rip value. Hopefully there was no Shantae's in there. All right. One of my favorite things is a brick of games, right? Like, look at that thing. Just a brick. I remember what this is. I bought a huge lot, I believe, from a seller, and he was, like, out of the game store at the time when I bought them, because um, the deal was insane, first of all. I sent him an offer. Way I lowballed this guy, and he, he accepted it, because here's a strat for you guys. If you ever see something on eBay that you're interested in and the price seems a little too high, make sure you watch it. And a lot of sellers, when they relist it, the price will go down and down and down as nobody buys it. And I was watching this thing for, like, probably over a month. He just kept relisting it, and the price got lower and lower and lower. So then I noticed the last time he relisted it, he said, this is the last time I'm listing this, otherwise I'm just going to, I don't know, whatever the hell he said he was going to do with them. Stop selling them or whatever. So I saw that, and I'm like, all right, let me lowball this guy even lower. So I got an insane deal. These are not all the games. Actually, some of the games I already opened and streamed some of them. But this is a remainder of what he sent, because he ended up sending them individually. Because I got one box that had, like, half the games, and some of them were missing... And I wrote to him, he's like, oh yeah, that's that's my assistant, he was afraid to ship all of them together, I don't know what the hell the story was again. Anyway, we got all the games, so nothing to be worried about. So this is a mix of Game Boy Color and Advance, and maybe some Game Boy, I don't know, I, I always sell any regular Game Boy games. Uh, these do not have the inserts, like the things that hold them in place, some of them actually. Maybe some of them do. Okay, so apparently we got... Two games in one, Spongebob and Fairly Odd Parents, whatever, no big deal. Scooby-Doo Unmasked. Some of these games were just filler. They were definitely more desirable games in here. Power Rangers SPD. Greatest Arcade Hits. And then we got the other brick. Oh, I can see a pretty rare one in here. Here's the other brick. I mean, I don't mind that the seller, uh, I actually thought it was kind of, if I buy a big lot of games in cardboard boxes, I would actually prefer if they were shipped in smaller individual boxes. Spy Hunter, Game Boy Advance, Cartoon Network Block Party, and Cartoon Network Speedway. Man, apparently this was the super jank, like, this guy packaged a lot of the really desirable ones together, for sure. Dragon Ball Z card game, nice cover. And then this one is actually pretty damn uncommon on Game Boy Color. Worms Armageddon. I hate Worms. I'm not a fan of that series. Not for me, but I need it for the collection. Uh, yes, this is from Best Buy. So I know exactly what this is. Let's see how Best Buy's packaging stacks up to Amazon's. They gotta compete, right? Oh my god. They're worse than Amazon. For real, Best Buy. So, let me show you how they ship this. I mean, I guess it's better than an envelope. No packaging. Super Nintendo Classic. Just rattle that around in there, you know? Uh, yeah, so I bought this when I was undecided if I wanted one or not, and this was when they came in stock, and um, this is the original version, by the way, this is not that reprint one that people don't really want, this is the original one, the more desirable. Um, I ordered this because at the time I was like, well, if I don't want it, I could always resell it, 
because I really wasn't sure if I wanted this. I was only buying it for Star Fox 2. Ends up that my hype died down by the time I got it. As you can see, I didn't even open the goddamn box. Um, so yeah, probably still don't really want this. I, I don't even know what these original ones go for these days. Probably, probably not that much, I have to say. All right, what do we got here? December 2018, six ounces. So something tells me this is probably another Game Boy Color game. We'll find out. Completely random what I grabbed, by the way. Like, it just so happens that we're getting front-ended here by a lot of Game Boy games. What do we have here? Well, it's definitely a Game Boy game. But let's find out together. Let's unwrap this thing like the mummy. One layer at a time. Let's see it reveal itself. Oh. Getting closer. Oh, oh shit, I see what this is. Man, I thought I opened this. This is super rare. Titus or Titus the Fox. Complete mint Game Boy Color. Super rare these days for Game Boy Color. I've had this on my watch list for many years trying to get a copy of this. Uh, and this is as mint as they come. Horrible game. Absolutely horrible. But I love my horrible games. Yeah. Creators of Superman 64, that should tell you something. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the game is doesn't... People don't care about the cart only. People care about this box and manual. I can see why they wrapped it so nicely. Packaging is getting out of hand. What did I pay? I don't remember, but it was very cheap. Typically, I buy something like that, too. It's, uh, it's usually with some kind of percent off coupon or eBay bucks or something. Yeah, the Game Boy Color boxes, finding one in that condition is crazy rare, because people always crush them, throw them out, all kinds of fun stuff. Ow, just dropped the scissor on my foot. What is this? Oh! For Lewis, if you're in chat, this one's for you. Ready? Aragorn's Quest for the Wii. Can't wait to check this one out. Um... I guess more desirable than the other versions, because I don't want to play with a move controller. Uh, I don't want to play with a normal controller, I want to play with the Waggle Fest and go with the Wii version. For Lewis always recommending that one to me. So we'll find out how it is. This one's very tightly wrapped. This is also from last month. So this one hasn't been uh, aging all that much. Still a little bitter, you know. Um, how am I going to open this? This is wrapped incredibly close to the, the game. Here, look at this. Look how close I have to cut this. Just the tip. Life lesson. Alright, ready? We're just going to whip it out. Oh, yes. I forgot about this. Got a crazy deal on this game. Uh, this is actually getting pretty uncommon and sought after and pricey. Um, hard to get a copy of this for under $30 these days. It's it's getting pretty expensive. I guess con uh, considering... Yeah, I used to have a copy of this, but don't forget that copy was sealed, so I never opened it. I sold it, and now I have a copy that's used so that I don't have to open it. And I paid like $12 for this. Crazy deal. The person didn't know what they were selling. Uh, complete. And of course, a nice seller that puts a little bubble wrap insert in there to keep the disc from falling out. nice and slow. Ooh, this is a... What is this? I'm just feeling it right now. Hmm. Interesting. What the hell is this? It's gotta be a CDI game or something. It's in a slipcase. Let's find out. It is CDI. Little Divil. Commonly, um... Commonly pronounced as Little Devil, because people just fail to realize that that's not the correct spelling. Cool little game that I've been after for many years. Not sure how horror-ish this could be for October, but it's a, it's a fun little puzzle adventure game. Exclusive. 
I knew it was CDI though. I know, I know the feel of my CDI games. All right, let's do a box. Oh, this one's heavy. Priority mail, 15 bucks to ship this. This is from May. Um, probably more PS1 games if I'm gonna guess. All right, so we've got the full gamut of packaging in here. We've got a grocery bag. Oh no, this is a umbrella bag. Okay. Wait, wait, that's some, that's some good headphone users. There you go. We've got an envelope sliced open to protect the sides as well. All right, very clever. And then we've got a bunch more uh, umbrella bags. Somebody works at a store with umbrella bags. And then we've got the brick right here. All right, looks like we're gonna be slicing this one. Ugh. Where's the best place to slice this? Actually, this might be a good scissor. Hold on. Choice of tools here. Let's see what we've got. It is more PS1 games. Which ones? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, yes, this deal. This deal was insane. Didn't I buy this on e uh, one of my eBay? No, maybe I didn't buy this on eBay Game Hunting. No, I showed this on eBay Game Hunting after I bought it. So this was an insane deal. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but the price, the price was in insane for all these games. Like, could not pass it up. Black Label Tenchu 2. Metal Gear Solid Black Label. Disc sounds a little loose in there. I'll have to inspect that. Okay. That's good. Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. Black. Rebel Assault 2 Black. Tenchu Black. Resident Evil 2 Black. I'm pretty sure I paid maybe like just around 30 or under for everything, which the price of the two Tenchu games alone pretty much pays for the entire lot, so i um, probably going to keep the two Tenchus because I don't own those, and then sell everything else, pay for everything else. My favorite strat, buy a lot where you need like a couple of the games, price everything out, sell the extras that you don't need, and pays for the other games, so you pretty much get it for free. And in some instances, you get paid, you pretty much get paid money to put games into your collection because you profit so much from it. Never gets old. Alright, let's do another box. Let's do a piece of merchandise. I don't want to tempt myself. So this is from Thailand. Uh, super rare thing, what's in here. Probably only I will appreciate it. Cover up whatever the hell that is on the back. My first Taiwanese box. It's very... Very structured, it's steady, it's not a garbage box. So I can probably just pop this one open. Let me get some of that popping action for you right here. Ready? Ooh, there's the D. Let's pop that D flap out. Ooh. Look at that. Uh, pretty obvious what it might be now, right? Just slide it out of the slot. It's a little tight. Ah, there he is. Now, it's not often that I buy Sonic plushes anymore, so you know that means something when I buy one, because I pretty much have... Ooh, ooh, that is good right there. Listen to that Taiwanese tape. Ooh. God damn. So you know this shit's got to be rare for me to buy this. This is exclusive to Taiwan. This derpy looking Sonic plush, like super freaking rare. Ooh, it actually smells nice. It's got like a 
They definitely like sprayed this either that or their house smells amazing. It's good. It doesn't smell like cigarettes or nothing. This looks so wrong. So I just gotta pull these little arm rings down. Ooh, those are sturdy. Um, so yeah, this was... This was released exclusively... I believe, I'm trying to remember the history on this, in either Taiwan or somewhere... Somewhere for promotional purposes within China. Um, most of the time you're scared away by things that are released in China as being fake knockoffs, but this, this was official. Like, this is an actual official Sonic plush for, for China. Um, and it's insanely rare. I don't think I've ever seen one of these for sale before. Um, there's only like one or two photos of this plush online. Because practically nobody owns it. Uh, actually a really nice classic Sonic plush too. Very... the proportions are good. I feel like I'm doing a review for my old Sonic channel. Proportions are good. Uh, very heavy stuffing too. Very heavy head. And I love the face. Those eyes. Very classic look. I like it. So, glad to add that to the Sonic collection. I usually don't buy Sonic plushes anymore, so it's nice. It's exciting to find something new that you don't have. Yeah, and in case you guys are wondering what I'm referring to, many, many years ago, on my now retired channel, Sonic Collectibles, I used to do Sonic review videos of things from my collection. Am I excited for the Sonic movie? I am. I'm excited to see what they do with the redesign. Okay, so this one came last month. Oh, there are obese Sonic plushes. Let me tell you. Ow. Damn, corner of this envelope poked my finger. Hold on. Let's see what we've got in this envelope. Okay. I'm feeling around. Ooh, this feels like a DS game. DS game? What the hell did I buy? Let's find out. Oh, this is definitely DS. Interesting. Here we go. Oh, shit. Speaking of which, I forgot I bought this. I got this game for like $3. The person didn't even make any money off of it. They put it up for bidding with free shipping, and I'm, I was like the only person to bid on it. I even said to them, I'm like, look, because they were charging for uh, first class mail. I said to them, look, I'm not in a rush to get this. You can even send this media mail just so that you make a little bit more money on it because I'm a nice person. They didn't, though. They still shipped it first class. Um... Which means they made almost no money on this. So thank you, person, that pretty much let me get a free copy of this. This is way different than the, the console version, by the way, in case you're wondering. So we will check that out sometime. I know you guys are panicking that I'm going to cut myself on the blade. I promise I will put the blade away every time I use it. Yeah, shipping has gone up for the Postal Service. Ooh, we got some nice vintage here. This is from November last year. This is 8 ounces. See what we've got here. Nice thing is I'll finally be able to get rid of all these damn boxes. But it's gonna be like saying goodbye to a loved one, you know? I've had some boxes in my collection, like back when I used to buy and import stuff from Japan. Some of the boxes that they used to ship stuff to me and were just like the most sturdy, well-made boxes I'd ever received. And I still have them things, I just put other stuff in them. All right, let's pop out this stuffing, ready? Ooh. But I'm pretty sure I got this for under half of what it normally sells for, so I jumped on it. It is a complete copy. Wario Land 3. Never played this game. Nintendo needs to do something new with Wario in terms of a platformer. Very nice condition. People ship... Man, I gotta say, people shipping me Game Boy Color games in boxes? Very nice of them. Almost cut my finger. <laughs> December of last year. That's what I'm talking about. It's got a nice crunchy envelope. It's got a nice crunch to it. I'll look. This is the rare chance where I have a chance to uh, get some tearing ASMR on here. No scissors. I have no idea what this game is. I'm not looking. Oh, there he is. Gumby. There we go. 
Sealed? Wow, I forgot about the sealed. It must have been a crazy good price. Probably didn't know what they were selling. Because I normally do not buy sealed games, so it must have been a really cheap price. Gumby versus the Astrobots, a pretty decent looking Gumby platformer. Exclusive to the Game Boy Advance. We will check that out sometime. Looks like a decent speedrun, too. Yeah, they wrapped it in this, in an envelope. Very odd choice. feel this one. Oh, okay. Oh, I think I know what this might be. This one's kind of exciting if it is. Because it's it feels like a, a DVD case, but it's wrapped quite well. This thing is ready to withstand a freaking war. I saw a spine there. Be very oh, I see what this is. I see what this is. And this was a pretty good price. I was camping on this one for a while. And I think it's going to be worth the investment for streaming purposes. If I can get it out of here. At least they packed it quite well. Hold on. Yeah, normal US Customs does not give a crap about what you're getting. Alright, ready? We'll slide this one out for you guys. Let me, let me get it the most teasy possible, alright? Nice and slow. Oh. Original Xbox? Oh, Xbox Live. Coast to coast. There it is. One of the most desirable original Xbox games. We're jumping in. You guys have been wondering why I haven't been playing Outrun 2. It's because I've been waiting for this shit. We're gonna try it. Hopefully, I like it better than Outrun 2 because of the drafting. Really good price on this. I was... I was camping that for probably about... a year. On eBay. Patience is key. This is a... I guess this is a, a one we can tear open. See what this is. Oh, I kind of forgot about this. Yeah. Super cheap copy I got of this, let me tell you. Like, I think I sent them an offer and got No One Can Stop Mr. Domino for something like eight or nine bucks. Like, crazy deal. You guys might recall I did that one stream where I predicted what PS1 games will go up in price gradually. This is one of them, and I got a really good deal on this. Uh, we'll play that sometime. And I just... Well, I don't do it anymore, but I used to just hop on eBay at like 5, 6, 7 in the morning, and you find some crazy deals at that time. People just not up, they're just sleeping or at work or something. So. Oh, it's a box filled with Game Boy games. This one should be fun. In case you guys were getting sick and tired of more Game Boy, here they are. Oh, right, this lot. Oh yeah, this was a good deal. Let's see. Mortal Kombat 4. It's not one that you see all that often. Essential for every Game Boy Color collection. Little Mermaid 2 pinball. Gotta have it. Can you guys hear the Ice Cream Man, by the way? Ah, uh, here it is. This is actually quite rare to get complete. Freaking just straight up Looney Tunes from Sunsoft. Just that's the only that's the name, Looney Tunes. Uh, not easy to find. So if you ever see this complete in the box, grab it. Quite difficult to get. Uh, this one, I think this is the one where they said it doesn't come with a cart. So they sent me. Oh no, this one did come with the cart. What the hell? Let me see something here. No, that comes with the cart as well. Hmm. The Smurfs Nightmare. 
A decent looking platformer. This is getting more desirable. A lot of people trying to snatch these up. Price is starting to go up for Perfect Dark. Good condition copy on that. Pac-Man Special Collector's Edition. Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. I already have like one or two copies of this, so that's that's normally what I look for in lots, like something that I will sell. So I will sell this because I already have a complete copy, and that'll sell for at, at a convention probably a good twenty bucks. Um, and then something else I'll sell because I don't collect complete Game Boy games, Odd World Adventures. I just don't want complete Game Boy games because that is a market I do not even want to tempt myself to get into. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Gex, Enter the Gecko. And I have this one as well. Quest for Camelot. It's a decent little Zelda clone, if I remember right. Yeah, Zelda clone kind of game. I do not buy clear box protectors. I have some of them for like my Virtual Boy collection, um, but I don't go out of my way to buy those. Really nice condition on all these. I'm happy with that. Are these random lots? Yep. Um, but normally if you see me buy a lot, it means that it's a crazy good deal. Because usually you can get really good deals on lots, especially if people don't want to start pricing out and figuring out what the whole lot is worth. And you're going to see that later with a certain package. January of this year. DVD game. Let's just pop this one out together, shall we? Just slide it out a little. Oh, it looks like a 360 game? Actually, I don't know what this is. Let's get the front of the box. Let's figure this one out together. Huh. What is... Oh, is this when I was... Oh, yeah, this is when I... I'm mistaking... I rarely do this, by the way. But, uh, I... <laughs> I rarely buy double copies of games. I bought this while I was at GDQ in my hotel room. And I for, I woke I think I woke up or I got home from GDQ and I remember looking at Metal Dungeon and thinking about buying it but I couldn't remember if I bought it. So I bought another copy and you might say, "Well, why not just check eBay and see if you bought it?" I did. Um, but the thing is I have my my door sniper account and I kind of forgot that I, I mistakenly bought it under that alternate account. So, uh, yeah, I double bought by mistake because I couldn't remember. I don't usually make that mistake. Um, and I'm sure this will be really easy to sell. I'm sure there will be plenty of people clamoring to get their hands on the best RPG on the original Xbox. Apparently there's four games in here. And I bought this. This is pretty... Oh, this is April of this year. Um, I actually have no idea what the hell is in here. I can't remember. Pop it open. Oh, Japan hooking me up with the matcha Kit Kat. Snack hype. Oh, right. I forgot I bought this lot. Yeah, this was a crazy good deal on this. This was super cheap. I actually may not want to spoil some of these games in here, because I was going to stream them towards the holidays, but whatever, I'll show them. This was so cheap. I like what you, I could have bought one of the games in this lot, and it would pay for the whole lot. So we've got uh, Mad Maestro Christmas Edition. So some of you might remember this game that released on the PS2. Um... There's like one other one that released in Japan exclusively, and this one was exclusive as well. So you, you know, you're a conductor, it's a music rhythm game, and you play apparently Christmas music in this version. That's kind of cool. Um, we got this promotional disc for Parappa and Ape Escape from McDonald's. It's an actual game. Like, there's gameplay in here. Uh, and this is, like, I could have bought this game separately and it would have paid for the entire lot. It's... Not the cheapest, believe it or not. It's just a couple of little mini games in here as a compilation, as a promotional, in Japan. Giant Robo, the animation. 
based on some show that I am not familiar with. Kind of reminds me of Robot Alchemic Drive. So, might be fun. And this one I don't care about, it just came with a lot. So whatever, Armored Core, Nine Breaker. I think this entire lot was like $15 shipped. Like, it was a crazy deal. I think I sent an offer and they accepted it too. How do I play my imports? I have a Japanese PS2. This actually was delivered on my birthday. So, happy birthday to me, I suppose, right? Let's pop this one out together. I have no idea what this is going to be. Let's see. Oh, I know what this is. I can already tell. I know my box art. Do any of you know what this is? You can... You can start seeing it there. This is actually a game for Horror Month. Ah, there it is. Now you should know. Clasp envelopes. No, it's... If I can get it out of this goddamn wrapper. Alone in the Dark, the New Nightmare. I've been after this one for many years. Just finally found a crazy cheap copy on it. Um... Pretty groundbreaking graphics for the Game Boy Color. Uses the same engine that the... I'm pretty sure the same engine that the Resident Evil game was trying to use, but never came out. Pre-rendered graphics, backgrounds, crazy animations and graphics in this game. So, perhaps that'll make an appearance this October. Oh boy. They took the newspaper crinkling method. Gotta dig. Oh my god, really big. What the hell did I get? Alright, so inside of all of that, we got a brick wrapped in grocery bag. Ooh, listen, listen to that. That bubble wrap. Very squeaky bubble wrap. Oh, yes, this. Another super cheap lot. Didn't I buy this on... I could have swore I bought this on stream. Individually wrapped games. Oh, my goodness. All right. It's actually like Christmas. They're wrapped in, like, a wax paper. It's like digging, look at this, like excavating these things. There we go. Alright. We'll do it this way. Man, I wish everybody wrapped their games like this. It makes it more exciting. It's like opening a present. We'll do it from the back first. Uh huh. Let's see if anybody knows what that is from the back. It's a little hard to tell. Yeah, this was another very, very cheap lot. Um, I could sell a couple of games in here and instantly make all my money back, and then everything else is either keep or profit. Overwhelmed? Nope. Never overwhelmed. Hello, Snake Soul. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Oh, it's very wordy. Oh, I see a letter there. Wild Arms 2. Complete... Actually, not bad. Oh, no, there's a little crack on the back. That's okay. Good condition otherwise. I don't have Wild Arms, too. I don't think. So that one will go in the collection. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. Just rip it open. Dino Crisis. I don't think I have the original Dino Crisis. So that's another one to keep. Oh, yes. I was excited for this. Wait, do I have... No, it's the second one that I still need. Yeah, I don't think... No, I do have this. So this will be one to sell. But this should almost pay for... 
Well, actually, no, there's one more game that'll pay for the entire lot price. That's coming up next. It's like undressing a game. Saga Frontier. Little, little bit of a shitty condition, but can still easily get rid of that. Alright, and then this is the one that pays for pretty much the entire lot, and then because I already have it... Easy sale. Quite desirable right now as well. We'll start with the back. Oh, there he is. Parappa the Rappa. A couple of cracks in the case, but you can easily change that out. Getting uh, getting pretty pricey for this game. It's hard to get this for under 45 50 bucks now. Never would have thought with all the ports and HD remakes, the original copy is still sought after. Oh, and then this is easy. Get rid of this day one, because I have no desire to play this. Believe it or not, this surprised me. This game is actually close to 20 bucks, so... Helps uh, pay for the lot of other games. Ready? <laughs> NFL Street 2. Believe it or not, more expensive than I thought it would be. Easy reselling fodder. Alrighty. We got another brick, apparently. A brick of PS1 games. Ugh, nothing is better. There it is. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfectly fitted. Oh, there we go. That's a lot. Yeah, it's like a nest. Alright, let's do surgery on this thing. Ooh. That's the good stuff right there. Mm-hmm. I see RPGs. Oh my god. This is really tight. Peeling away the layers. The ultimate tease. Seeing all those double discs. But not knowing what they are yet. Alright. Lots of fodder in here for the expo. Resident Evil Director's Cut. Greatest Hits. I actually already have the Greatest Hits version of that. Parasite Eve. Black Label. This one is somewhat more exciting. Vandal Hearts. Yeah, I've noticed Parasite is going up a little bit. It used to be dirt cheap. Hello, Lebby. Welcome. Another Black Label Final Fantasy VII. Not a bad time to pick them up, because I feel like the remake is going to make the price go up even more. Because it already has. Um, Oddworld's original Black Label. Not my favorite series, I'll tell you that. And a black label with the manual reversed. Crash Bandicoot. This is like creeping up on 40 bucks these days, so that alone almost pays for the price of what I paid for everything else. Well, the black label version specifically. No one... People, yeah, people are actually buying Crash like crazy. Um, but specifically the black label can go upwards of $40. It's typically 30 to 40 all the time. More Game Boy. Lots of bricks. Two bricks. Actually, no, hold on. Trap door. Damn, that is next level. For a second, I was getting ready to toss this box, then I felt the weight. Look at this shit. Look at that. Looks like the bottom of a box, right? Look at this. It's like really, really in there. 
But there's another, there's another freaking box down here. Hold on. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a box within a box, like really tightly. I can't even get this out of here. Oh my God. What did they, how? What the hell? I, I can't even comprehend how this is put in here right now. It's not a box within a box, it's like, it's like a Frankenstein, I don't know, what the hell. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna try slicing this open from the bottom, I, this thing is in here. It is in there. It's not a box, like, you're saying they taped two boxes together, it doesn't... Oh, you're right, they did tape two boxes together, but the, the bottom, like, I can't even open the bottom portion of it. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Wow, I've never seen somebody do this before. Interesting. Look at that. Yeah, so they taped... I was supposed to open this from the bottom. This is the bottom of the box. And then this here was the other side that I opened. It's like a puzzle. So we got another brick. And another brick. Don't know if the, oh yes, there are some highlights in here. Indeed. Seven more copies of Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> okay, so we've got this is probably gonna be the highlight of the box, because this is pretty uncommon. Um got a sticker on the front, but that's okay. Backtrack, really uncommon first-person shooter on the Game Boy Advance. It's one of those 3D engine shooting games. No one ever talks about this shit. Like, it's very hard to find this complete. A lot of these are kind of filler. World po Poker Tour. Poker, whatever. You know, you're going to get these games in lots sometimes. Rocket Power. Cool hands. Pinball Tycoon. A lot of a lot of filler garbage here. You can see that he tended to package the what he considered filler together in the same box. The wilds. Who knows? Some of these might be good, but probably not. Probably get rid of most of the the garbage. Not gonna hold on to all these. I didn't buy these lots. Don't forget, this is from the same seller that sent me a bunch of other games. Um, it was a lot that I mentioned earlier, where I kind of waited months, like a good month or two, for the price to come down and down, and then I lowballed them, and he still sold it to me for a crazy price. Like, there was a copy of Superman for the original Game Boy complete in there. That alone can sell for 50 60 easily. Um, and that was a, a good chunk of what I paid for the lot, so it pays for itself. And that's only one game. Uh, Tomb Raider. Ooh. Superman Countdown to a Crop Apocalypse. I don't think this one's worth anything, from what I can remember. Or if it's worth something, it's not too much. Garbage. Garbage. Definitely not having these games take up room in my collection. But those are the ones, like, I actually sat there. Usually what I do when I find a lot like this, I will spend a, an hour or two sitting there actually going through, not using price charting entirely, like doing my own research on eBay and price charting if needed. Price everything out, price out what I want to keep, what I'm going to sell, find out how much I'll get for the stuff I sell. On the low end, because obviously not everything is going to sell for what you want it to, and shipping and fees. And then it usually works out to be either I break even, or I pay a little bit, or in some cases I make money back and put games in my collection. And this is one of the lots that was uh, definitely worth looking into. Because most people are not going to spend two hours individually adding up the price, a realistic price for every game in a lot. But I do, and then I find out that, hey, this is a crazy good deal for this price, especially if I can send an offer. Alright, this is the last brick, 
So rest in peace, bricks. Do I sell on a bundle? Mm. Well, I'll be I'll be trying to sell these at a convention, so you don't got to deal with fees. Top Gear Rally. Card games. Sea Trader. Pinball Fantasies for Game Boy. I don't remember what this one goes for. Probably not too much, but that's one that'll probably sell because people are going crazy for original Game Boy stuff and cars. So, no big deal on this. Let me, um... Let me just get these in this bin here before things get out of control. Oh. I think I know what this is. Crazy price on this. I'm actually tempted to try and sell this too, because I just don't have the room for it, but the price was so good I couldn't resist. It's not a game. Well, actually, it is kind of a game. But it's not a video game. Can you guys hear that? Shaking the box around. You hear that? Something rolling around in there. Oh, packaging, newspaper, it's gonna be so fun to clean. Ah, there it is. See if I can give you guys a excavation shot of this one. Oh, something fell. One piece at a time. Oh, what am I seeing there? Oh. oh, I see Sonic. Oh. Sonic pinball table. Complete brand new in the box. Like, you just do not find this thing in the box. You see it all the time loose, but my freaking god, like, you never... And this thing is mint, well not mint, but it's really good condition. Could not pass it up for this freaking price. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it, but it was cheaper than what you would pay for a dingy old used one. People were sleeping at this one. Um, yeah. So, not sure if I'm going to hold on to this, because it's, it's pretty bulky. I mean, this is... It's not going to be easy to have this sitting around, so if I can get a good price for it, so be it. Really cool box on it, though. Supersonic pinball. You can hear it rattling around in there. But, um, yeah. Love the packaging on vintage Sonic toys. It's kind of hard to pass it up for me, personally. Oh. Ah. I forgot about this. Yeah, so I've been on a break from hunting for, uh... Well, I'll just let it reveal itself. Don't normally buy these kind of things, but this was rare. I've never seen it before on eBay, I don't think. I had to snag it. Oh, what do we have there? A hat! So, I don't keep up with modern Sonic stuff. Um, I couldn't completely tell if this was new, like a modern hat, or if this was vintage. It was a little hard for me to tell. Um, the, the, the listing said that it was vintage, so I kind of went with it. I wasn't sure. It was a good price. If it's vintage, I mean, this thing is not even, the bill isn't even folded. So, whatever. It could be a new hat. It could be whatever. Um, no big deal. It was super cheap. I just pounced on it. I'll just have to look into it a little bit more. If it's a modern hat, I'll probably just get rid of it. Because I, I usually only collect the vintage stuff, so... But uh, yeah, I was on a break for quite a while, hunting Sonic stuff. Because for a while I got burnt out, I, I had most of the vintage stuff that I wanted. Um, yes, and indeed, this is Sonic. Got this super, super cheap. These are not that, not that rare, but it's, uh, it's hard to find them brand new with the tag. And I think this was only like seven bucks shipped, so. For the collection, or to keep me warm during the winter, we have vintage Sonic hand mittens for kids. And it has the tag, which is not easy to find, because normally when you find people selling these gloves, I mean, it's got to be new old stock. 
Uh, but normally they're without the tag, so totally worth it. Put my little hands in there, you know, keep them warm. My, I can't even fit four fingers in there, so. One for the display closet. Ah, yes. Now, I can't remember if this was box and manual only, or if it had the cart. I'll have to open it and see. We have something I couldn't pass up because the price was too good. Dragon Warrior Monsters. This was actually one of my earliest Game Boy Color games, so I still have my copy. Um, you know, I don't think I have my copy of this anymore, so I might have to hold on to this. Let me just see what this was again. I don't remember if this was box and manual only. Uh, no, this is box and cart, so now I just need the manual. Insanely cheap price for this. Um, that's why I bought it. Normally I wouldn't buy something without the manual, but I said to myself, that's so cheap that if I just get a manual, it's like probably half the price that I would normally have to pay for getting this complete. So, sometimes you gotta get it incomplete and then piece it together later on. What? Two games? Huh. Ah, uh, there it is. That's right, I bought this on eBay. There it is. We bought this last eBay game hunting. So this is the lot that I got there was a $3 off coupon, and I think this was selling for like $7 free shipping, so I used the coupon and got it for $4 shipped. <laughs> I've been kind of dying to play this game, to be honest with you. Uh, and this game, non-platinum hits, is like $8, $10, and then it comes with a copy of Aquaman, so whatever. I can probably sell Aquaman for whatever the hell it sells for and pay for this game for free, so. Who knows, maybe Aquaman is closer to $10 now because of the movie, who knows. Whatever, the deal was amazing, so couldn't pass it up. I tried streaming Aquaman, by the way, a couple years ago. I was actually kind of enjoying the first couple levels, but then the game just got absolutely miserable. Ugh. One of the levels in particular was just unbearable. Okay, we got an envelope. From Japan. There it is. So you guys might remember I got the Mega CD recently, or the, the Mega SG, and then I picked up a region modded Sega CD for streaming Mega CD purposes, and then this is probably my most anticipated game to play with that combo. Um, if I remember the name of this, yes. Annette Futatabi. It's a beat-em-up in the El Viento series where you play as the heroine Annette. So, look forward to that sometime. I'll be streaming it. I think I know what this is. Uh, this one I'm going to have to like do surgery. Like, an incision on this shit. Like, look at this. I can't show you the other side, obviously, but... It is wrapped. I hate it when people freaking wrap shit tight with tape all around the whole thing. Because then that means we got to break out the razor and then hope that we don't slice the game. It's a little bit of a pain. Sometimes packing like this is not a good idea. So... Incision straight down there without cutting my thumb. I think I know what this is too, by the way. Got a crazy deal on this game. Man, this thing is really, really tight. Don't chip your games this way, people. Just put it in an envelope, bubble wrap, it's all good. This is going to do more harm than good. Okay. We've released it. Please help me, says the game, as we free it from its confines to reveal Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. I already own this game, but I think I paid about $10 for this copy. And if you guys know, this game is going for around $30 now, and I think the price is going to continue to climb, to be honest with you. Um, so, $10. Not passing that up. Someone was sleeping on the price on that game. This. Really flimsy envelope. Very thin. As you can see. Near paper thin. But perhaps that's because it houses paper. From Japan. I kind of didn't expect to win this. I kind of just put a bid in on it. I didn't even know the history on it, to be honest with you. I kind of was just like, whatever. If I win it, I win it. Kind of regretted it afterwards, but... 
here. Not expensive, though. Ah, what could we have here? All we see is an eyeball. We have Sonic trading cards from Japan. Uh, if any of you remember where these came from, let me know. But they are quite nice. Very glossy. Sega Freaks cards. Do you remember like they oh I know where this came from, Japan. Yeah, but do you remember where they were sold specifically? Were they just in a pack or like some kind of promotion with a game or something? I don't remember. Uh, but the cool thing is you flip them over on the other side, and this is the main reason why I wanted it. Um, it's actually like a mini puzzle. So when you piece all these cards together in the correct way, it makes like a mini poster. So if you put these in a, a page, uh, a card page holder, it'll form a poster with Sonic Tails and Knuckles. for the. I think the Sonic Jam artwork for the Sega Saturn is what they use. Yep, there it is. So I, I wasn't sure if this like came with Sonic Jam in some sort of promotion um, or not. But I was like, whatever. Super cheap. Very nice. So this one here is like kind of ancient. Uh, I was like, should I even unbox this? Because I know what it is. It's not like the most exciting thing in the world, but it is kind of cool, I guess, to look back on it. Um, this package is actually from 2014. Uh, this was hidden in my shelf where I kept all my strategy guides and some like magazines and whatnot. Um, just kind of forgot it was there. And, spoilers, it is a magazine. In a pretty big envelope. So for those of you that used to listen to All Gen Gamers, you might remember that we were sponsored by... Retro Magazine for a period of time. And I thought it would be really fun to see what issues... Because they used to send us free issues what issues were sent. I got two of them here. Kind of forgot I had these the entire time in there. So we have one, the RPG issue. Hyper Light Drifter. And then River City Ransom Underground on the for this one. <laughs> Ooh yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew, <laughs> I freaking knew looking at these now would be kind of funny. There it is, the freaking Ouya. Speaking of which, don't ask me why I have this sitting right behind me. Ugh. The OnLive in its full glory. I use this thing, by the way. The looks of the condition in the box would probably tell you otherwise, but... Oh! Not like that thing is usable anymore. <laughs> There's the OnLive and its controller. Ugh. Actually, it was a pretty nice controller, to be honest. Not bad. Very, very triggery triggers. Very clicky. Joysticks were nice and snappy. D-pad was maybe not the greatest. The only thing I remember doing on the OnLive is watching somebody play Ninja Blade. Like, watching them play it in real time. It was actually kind of mind-blowing at the time. I had never watched somebody play a game in real time. It was like voyeuristic. I was just, I was the only person watching them play. I was just sitting there watching this person play a game in real time, like what we do on Twitch now. But, you know, back in whatever the hell year it was, it was kind of weird. It just felt like you were invading somebody's privacy. That was the on live. It just came too soon, unfortunately. Six and a half pounds of games in this one. Ooh. Nice, bright, blue bubble wrap. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh, I forgot about this. This one's fun. I do own everything in this box already, but I get to piece it out, upgrade the condition of my personal collection, and sell 
the ones that obviously are slightly less good condition. Very nice box on this, by the way. This is way better than the one I have. 32X. Crazy deal on this. Actually, this guy's deals were so insane that he was listing stuff, and his shit was selling. That's how you know the, the seller is, like, out of their mind. They don't know what they're listing. When you have a seller that's listing lots of, like, items of games, and they sell out almost as instantly as they're put up, you know their shit is cheap, and that's what was happening with this guy's stuff. So I jumped on this 32X lot. I did piece it out quickly to make sure that I wasn't overpaying, but I could already tell um, that it was cheap. It's not just the 32X, which the box is quite nice, but we've got games. He packed them in the box, which is actually quite clever. Virtual Racing complete, nice and mint. Zaxxon Mother Base 2000. This is actually getting pretty pricey. One of the more uncommon 32X games. Star Wars Arcade. Pretty common, you know. Can't have a 32X without it. We've got, of course, the 32X itself. We got some carts. Space Harrier. Cart only of Space Harrier, by the way. Like upwards of 40 bucks for this thing. Very surprised with that. I, I was not expecting it. Um, Virtual Fighter. Afterburner. Afterburner Cart 2 getting up there in price. Very, very surprising. Cosmic Carnage. Another essential. Shadow Squadron. Also quite desirable for the 32X. And Metalhead. So I got a crazy deal on this. Obviously, can't remember off the top of my head. And wouldn't say anyway. But it was damn good. Obviously the only thing it doesn't... Oh, and a, a cart of Doom, apparently, in there as well. I got a small vintage, but I know what's inside, and then I have another vintage box from 2013 that I honestly have no idea what's actually inside of it. Um, perhaps something I can't show? I don't know. I don't know what the hell it actually is. Uh, <laughs> so, don't be disappointed, because I have absolutely no idea what it is. It's a little dusty, not gonna lie. It's a kind of a dirty box. Uh, it was December 2013. 10 pounds. So I've been saving the best for last, all right? Here's the box. I, I, would, I would show you the ship date on here, but I'm sure you'll believe me, but I don't want to reveal anything by mistake. Ugh. So, let me... Let me get... The razor blade. How am I gonna cut this? It might not even be game-related. I honestly have... It could be a life-size doll. I have no idea what the hell is in here. Ugh. It's, I gotta figure out how to actually open this. This is a very... Oddly constructed box. Okay. I guess... Here? From the top. Ugh. We'll figure it out, all right? All right, we're slicing. We're gonna unearth this package that is nearly six years old. Never opened. God knows what awaits inside of this thing. Hopefully it's worth it. It could be something really boring. Ugh. Kind of obscured under other stuff. I, I just forgot it was even there. Must not have been something that exciting though if I never opened it. Like what the hell? What would I buy back then that I wouldn't open? I don't know. Oh my god. Alright. Move this. Getting, we're getting in there. Just one more flap remains. All right. I 
Is he blue? I don't know. I'm not even going to look at the shipping thing. Oh, no. Oh, God. Of all things it could have been. Oh, I should have figured. <sighs> yep. 2013 me. Alright, you guys ready? Wow. I forgot I even bought this. There's probably a reason why it remained in this box. I think I bought this after it had died down. Alright, here we go. A fucking suitcase of Skylanders. Wow. How times have changed. Oh, that! what the hell am I going to do with that now? You can't even throw these things out anymore. I was trying to think, I'm like, what the actual hell could I have bought back then that I would have left in the box? And now we see... Holy Christ. I mean, it's a nice suitcase. <sighs> Little Billy's collection is now with me. Here we are. All I remember at the time there were like some pretty rare ones in here too. Probably pennies now. But we got double doors. Filled to the brim with Skylanders. <sighs> what the hell am I going to do with this now? I don't want to have to deal with these. These are such a pain to sell. Now I'm going to be one of those people on eBay trying to sell like 50,000 Skylanders. Because by the way, I have more than this like packed away in boxes. Because once upon a time I was addicted to Skylanders for a couple of months. May have even made a YouTube channel about it. Uh, yeah, but we'll not, we won't go there. Oh, there's one wrapped in a, a Ziploc bag. Let's see what that one is. What is this? Oh, it's all the cards. Man, look at this. Little Billy. Sacrificing his card collection. What do we got in here? Oh, yeah, this one was pretty desirable back then. I don't, I don't remember his name. But this guy was going for like a solid 10 to 20 bucks alone, I remember. He was pretty cool. Anyway. How disappointing. <laughs> but at the same time, kind of a nice throwback, right? Like, Christ, Skylanders, a suitcase of them. My God. Any other ones I recognize? Yeah, there were, there were some pretty desirable ones in here, actually. Uh, indeed, I recognize quite a few of these. <sighs> well, at least I can get rid of that box now, finally. Six years later. Um... We got another one, though. Oh, here, here's the pamphlet for that Skylanders thing, by the way. Oh, God, I don't even want to... I mean, it was a good price for the time. 37 Skylanders. $81, $18 shipping. So, just under $100 for the Skylanders. Gar... Oh, my God. I'm not going to... Not even going to be able to get anywhere close to that for those. It's actually different from all the other boxes, because this is something I actually sold, and then the person wanted to return it, I guess because I don't even remember that we're talking. This is another box from 2013. January 2013. Um, but it's actually cool what it is, so we might as well open it. I was like, should I even open something that I sold that was returned to me? It is a package. I'm actually curious what this is worth these days. Back in the day, I sold this for $50, uh, when I'm about to show you. person wrapped it very nicely. It's blue. I'll show you the top of it to get you excited. Or not excited, depending. $50 back in 2013 for this. I wonder if the price has actually stayed steady. A 
It is... Which one? Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles? It's Tails. It's a talking Tails figure from Sonic Adventure. Pretty hard to find these mint in the box. Um, if I remember right, the reason why he returned it is because he... Oh, the battery still works. So that's not the reason he returned it. Boom. Unearthed. After all these years. Only to try and be resold again. One day. Because I don't collect tails anymore. Contrary to what you see behind me here with tails down there. Don't worry about that. Just, just to show you that I'm not... Like, this was shipped to me in a gigantic box. <sighs> Alright. This thing is filled with PS1 games to the brim. You can see it busting out the side. <sighs> All right. So what I did with this lot, because I'm not completely insane, is I spent probably close to two hours pricing every single game in this lot, what it would sell for, what it's worth. Turns out that I got everything that you're going to see here for half the price that it normally sells for exactly half the price and I, I was generous I wasn't you know if a game would sell for like 30 or 40 I'd write down like 33 I wasn't like going on the high end so if you see a game here the best way to think of it is I got the game for half the price that it sells for on average on eBay all right that's the best way to think about it when I sell everything that I don't need um, the lot will probably almost pay for itself with what I keep. Like, I'm probably just going to end up with free games and lots of them. Alright, so let's begin. OG. Final Fantasy IX. Black label right off the top. So I'm going to be putting these in a bin right next to me to try and help organize these. Something tells me this bin is going to fill up in no time. Black label Final Fantasy VIII. Covert Ops Nuclear Dawn. I remember look, uh, looking that one up. That one's worth like nothing. Inspector Gadget. Oh yes, you know it wouldn't be a lot without Bubsy 3D. Actually going up in price, by the way. It's getting more expensive. Urban Chaos. Never played this, so this one's this one's going in the collection. Quite a few of these will be. South Park. Never played the PS1 version. I was, uh, only played the N64 one. Crash 2 Greatest Hits. Speedball 2100. SimCity 2000. Complete with every GameStop sticker that you can possibly want. A broken hinged case of... I can't wait to play this. I remember renting this back in the day and haven't played it since. Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kasi. Hopefully I said that right. Absolute jank fighting game. Finally in my collection. Everybody's favorite PS1 RPG. Battle Hunter. Martian Gothic. I don't know if I've ever tried this game. It looks a little slow to me. But, uh, I don't know. Looks maybe... Like, it might be worth checking out for Horror Month eventually. Yeah. It's a horror game. How good? I don't know. Never really hear anybody talk about that one. Tony Hawk 3 Black Label. Some good old ball breakers. Mm-hmm. Put that one on the shelf next to my copy of Sticky Balls on the Gizmondo. Ooh, this was good. I forgot this actually came with this, because this game is creeping up there. Juggernaut. People are starting to seek this one out. I might I might sit on this one for a bit and let it age, because I feel like the price is only going to keep going up on that. I already have a copy. Don't have a copy of this, so this is kind of exciting. Um, I remember renting this and kind of enjoying it. Twisted Metal Small Brawl. MTV Music Generator, the game that is in every goddamn lot on eBay. Black label of Croc 2. Reloaded. 
You know, I revisited Loaded uh, a couple years ago on stream. Kind of ruined my childhood memories of playing that. It's definitely not as good as I remember it being back then. Maybe back then because I was playing co-op, it was way more fun. But revisiting that game as a single-player experience now, it doesn't hold up for me. Definitely meant to be played co-op. Ooh, Black Label, Soul Reaver. This one, nice to get another copy of this, Ninja Shadow of Darkness. Another game that I predict will slowly go up in price as people discover it. Shadow Man, I do have a Dreamcast copy of this too, so I'd probably go with that one over the PS1 version. This lot, this is one lot on eBay. This is not individual pickups for what I'm showing right now. This is all one auction. Beyblade, let it rip. Blaster Master, Blasting Again. A game that nobody ever mentions. This one is actually surprisingly rare. Um, this is a game that you never really see. Hellboy Asylum Seeker. I was actually quite surprised how hard this is to get. I checked eBay. Very little copies of this appear, and it goes for decent prices, too. So, so we'll check that out. Maybe it's super janky. It's supposed to be a horrible game, so it's right up my alley. Holy shit, I forgot this came with this. Oh my god, and the price for this is going crazy right now. Like, the price for, for Xenogears is going insane at the moment for Black Label. It's spiking up high. Wow. And it has the manual. Shit, this pays for like a fraction of the entire lot right there. I think when I checked that the price wasn't what it is right now. Warhammer Dark Omen, also known as a game that's probably impossible to play on a controller. Tekken 2 Black Label. Tecmo Stackers. Fairly uncommon game, but not pricey. Oh, interesting. This will be fun to check out one day, maybe. Not the best of conditions, but... X-Files. Cracked cover. The person that I bought this from also knew me from YouTube, so at least they knew. It was kind of sad because they said that they, uh, it's their personal collection. All these games are from someone's personal collection. It's not like from a store or something. They just said they couldn't lug them around anymore from moving from place to place. It was getting to be too much for them. Hence why it's in a duffel bag, because that's what they used to use to transport it from house or apartment to apartment, whatever their situation was. Star Wars Rebel Assault Black Label. And you can tell because there's no filler in here. Like this is a this is a personal piece together collection. You can tell it's not filled with garbage. Like everything in here feels like it was bought with a purpose. Spec ups. Another copy of Urban Chaos, because we all have that moment where we buy two copies of the same game, right? Big Race USA Pro Pinball. Jank filler, if I ever saw it. You know, I gotta get those childhood games in there. The Jungle Book Rhythm and Groove. This is a music rhythm game, believe it or not. Sure, that's a blast. Colony Wars Vengeance. Colony Wars games. There's more of those than I remember. Grudge Warriors. I was insanely surprised at how much this next game actually goes for. This will help pay for the lot as well. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember being like, what the hell? I gotta give it a different case, though, I think. But, freaking Warcraft 2 on PS1? Crazy. I think this game is going for, like, no less than 40 or $50 on eBay. Very surprised at that. I, I didn't think there would be a market for playing Warcrafts on PlayStation, but there is. Either that or it's really just sought after and rare. Yeah, Diablo 1 is also going for a good chunk of change as well. Uh, Mega Man 8. No big deal. I think this is like a... Wait a minute. This one has the anthology booklet? Now, for those of you that are Mega Man fans, isn't the one with the anthology booklet more sought after? Where is the anthology booklet? Maybe it doesn't come with it. 
comes with the manual, but I don't see an anthology book in here. Unless this manual is the anthology book. Which I don't think it is. Yeah, Mega Man 8 really isn't worth that much at all, it seems. Surprising. Um, this is starting to creep up as well. Condition is not the absolute best, but still. It's kind of cool to get this in the lot. Black Label Legend Dragoon. Black Label Dragoon is starting to creep up towards like 40 bucks almost. 30 to 40, depending on condition. Twist Metal 4 Black Label. Swagman. Finally have a damn copy of this game. I actually don't own this. So that's going in the collection. Black Label Twist Metal 3. Tony Hawk 2. Another copy of Tony Hawk 2. Powerpuff Girls, because, you know, every one of us once in a while want to dabble in some Powerpuff Girls, you know? Can't judge him for his collection. Mission Impossible. Not the greatest case condition, but not that big of a deal because it's just Riven. Not really sure who would be playing this on PS1. And you can play it on PC. Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. Black. Label. Gauntlet Legends. I personally am more of a fan of Gar Gauntlet Dar uh, Dark Legacy on PS2. Though I hear the GameCube version is better. The PS2 version is kind of like weird. Um, if I remember right, PS2 version is actually like the hard version of that game if you didn't know. There's completely different types of versions for those two games between Xbox, GameCube, and PS2, but most mainly the PS2 version is drastically different from GameCube and Xbox. If I remember right, GameCube and Xbox share the same version. Anyway, either way, PS2 and GameCube are completely different versions of Gauntlet Dark Legacy. So if you're a fan of that game, you um, might want to pick up uh, another copy on another console. Another black label of Final Fantasy Anthology. Oh, shit. Chocobo's Dungeon 2. That goes for a decent little price. Arcade's Greatest Hits. Oh yes, it wouldn't be a lot without Miracle Space Race. Obviously the next PS1 game in line to get an HD remake. Glover. Platformer Classic. Prefer the N64 version though. Gotta love that fog. So this is one of those box sets. This actually goes for a decent price too. Army Men Gold Collector's Edition, which comes with Army Men 3D, Army Men Air Attack, and Sarge's Heroes, and it's the white label versions for those. Someone called it freaking VIP. There she is. Pamela Anderson. Wouldn't be a PS1 lot without it. What I now consider my worst, the worst PS1 game I've ever played. Definitely one of the worst games I've ever played of all time. Like, normally I can find some redeeming qualities in bad games. This is not one of them. It is very bad. Worst of the worst. Horrible. I streamed it several years ago. Future Cop LAPD. Good game. Getting more sought after by collectors. Probably going to maybe hang on to that one. I don't know. See if the price goes up. I'm not sure. Ooh, kind of excited to have this. I would not mind trying this. I needed this for my collection. Vampire Hunter D. Perhaps making an appearance in October. We'll have to see. Everybody forgets there's a game for that on PS1. Ooh, wow, alright. And this is the time to own a copy of this Black Label, thanks to a certain game that just came out a few days ago. Symphony of the Night Black Label. Kind of forgot that was in there. X-Men Mutant Academy. The Incredible Hulk. Pantheon Saga. Star Wars Dark Forces. The Land Before Time Return to the Great Valley. Gotta love the jank. I'll have fun checking those out. Street Skater. Jankiness all over here. Cubics. Pretty sure this game is worth like 50 cents, by the way. Mech Warrior 2. Toy Story PS1 going up in price. I told you guys, remember, in my PS1 price prediction video, 
I, I said Toy Story 2 is going to start going up at the new film. What is it going for right now? I knew I knew that was going to go up. I called it. Battle Tank, Global Assault. Unfortunately, not the Black Label version of Alien Trilogy. If this was Black Label, by the way, it would be worth minimum $100, sometimes as high as 150 in case you were wondering. Greatest Hits is like nothing, 10, 15 bucks. Grind Session. Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit. I actually don't own many of these older Need for Speeds, so it's nice to, to get some of them. One of the all-time greats. Love this game. Time Commando. Never forget Harambe. Team Rocket to the rescue again. Another Team Rocket game. Well, it seems like this bin is actually going to be perfect. Just fits everything. Ugh. God, that is heavy. All right, we're getting down to the last handful here soon. Another black label Mittery Solid. You know, can't can't go wrong with those. Easy to get rid of. Tiger Shark. Just a random Dragon Quest Seven popping up in there. I don't own this. I have no intention of ever playing this. But it is a PS1 RPG that I do not own, so... Might have to hold on to that. Because I have almost every PS1 RPG. And that's one of the ones I do not have. So might as well hold on to it. Fear Effect. I needed this because my copy, actually the condition of the case, is god-awful. But it's sentimental to me because I just remember vividly buying that game in Blockbuster with a giant green $9.99 price tag on there. So in a way, owning a mint condition copy is kind of like, I don't know, it kind of kills the... The memories, you know, but Star Ocean Second Story. And last but not least, we got we got some love for you Europeans out there. A the only PAL game in the lot, Soul Blade. And that's it. Thirty pounds of PS2 games in a duffel bag. Now I have to go through them and price all of them, but I already went and made a price list for the ones I'm getting rid of and ones I'm keeping in my collection. And that's it. It's like a bomb hit it in here right now. Like, there's shit all over the... I just opened 50 packages. Leave it to me, right? Like, doing the unboxings back in 2009. Back when... People were getting excited over me opening a single brown box. Fast forward to 2019, a decade later. Here we are opening 50 boxes of shit that I don't even know what's in it. That's the new meta right there. Vintage unboxings. Let them age. You don't know what's inside. It's more exciting. But I have some things here that I was like, should I show this or shouldn't I? Um, they are packages, but it's not something that I like got in the mail. It's actually stuff that I bought from the Studio Ghibli Museum in Japan when I went there many years ago. And I never opened the shit up from the packaging. Uh, because my I had a single shelf that I dedicated to my Ghibli collectibles and uh it was full so i'm like well i might as well just keep this stuff like packed away and i kind of don't remember what i even bought and i'm not lying about that i don't even remember what these things are so i thought it might be kind of cool to look at it my favorite movie is mononoke <clears throat> by far so this all came from the museum in japan um so i have no clue what this is it comes in a Wooden box. Slide out. Why oh, did I unbox it in my Japan video years back? I just think when I got back I was so exhausted and just kind of put the stuff to the side. Because I was filling the shelf up and then when it was full I was like, well, I don't want to take this stuff out of the box because it's just going to get dusty and I won't be able to put it on the shelf. So I kind of just kept it packed away and I went to Japan and what was it? 20... 2012? 2013? I don't even remember. It's been a while. 2011? I can't remember. Anyway, we're about to find out what the hell this is, because I, I, honestly, I have no idea. I can't remember. I bought this stuff in person, and we got a fancy wooden... Just be careful not to dump this stuff out. 
Oh, yes. That. Holy shit. I wonder what these things are worth now. You know, I paid at cost in Japan, so some of this was not the most expensive back then. But now, who knows what the hell it costs. I can't remember his damn name, from, uh, but the robot from Castle in the Sky. Very heavy copper figure. Very heavy. It's crazy detail on this thing. And then it comes with a little plaque that says Ghibli Museum Mitaka. Right down there. So you stand him on that. Check out the detail on the back. Like, they actually use like a, a silver metal to show the details underneath his armor. Really nice. Gonna have to look at the prices of what these things go for and decide if it's something I'd part with or want to hold on to. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard to decide because at the same time I didn't even remember I owned this stuff, you know. But now looking back at it, it's like, damn, do I really want to get rid of that? Because even the box for this thing is crazy nice. A tiny little box from the museum. This one looks like it's gonna be from Howl's Moving Castle. As you can see, just so you know, I'm not lying to you. They still have the tape on there where it's still sealed because if I open this up, it would be broken. So you can see, never opened it. I'm probably going to leave this in the box, maybe? I guess I can take it out. Oh, no, it's quite delicate. Let me see. Oh, it's like a... Oh, shit, that... Yeah, that's like a puzzle. It comes apart. Not a puzzle, but it's like a... Yeah, I'll see, I'll see if I can show it to you in the side. It's Hal's Moving Castle. Let me hold it. Um... It's a metal house moving castle, little miniature metal statue, but like the pieces of it come apart, so like you can dissect the castle. Essentially, it's pretty cool. I don't remember this being that expensive either, because I I'm pretty sure I bought one for a friend. If I remember right, so it couldn't have been that expensive. We've got a baggie. And this is what their bags look like. Mama Oito. Ghibli Museum. Shop. I think I spent more time in the shop than the actual museum when I went. Because I went when it was like closing in a few hours. I was able to see the whole museum. I was able to watch a movie. Um, one of the exclusives. And go to the shop. I think I was in the shop for like an hour and a half at least. Alright, so this is going to be a grab bag, because this stuff has been sitting in this bag for pretty much years. So let's see what I bought back then. We've got a Kodama, what appears to be Teaster. But back then I would buy anything Princess Mononoke if it was cheap enough, so... Pick that up. Hey, my neighbor Totoro little miniature keychain. Now, you guys gotta remember something. When I went to Japan, and the reason why I went so crazy buying merchandise, um, these films had not really yet taken off in the US. It wasn't like the cult status that it is now, where every store that you go to and everywhere you look, there's stuff for sale for these films, like merchandise and whatnot. Um, it was almost impossible at the time when I went to Japan to find any merchandise for any of these films in the US. I'd say maybe a, about a couple years after I came back is when it started to really take off, where you'd go to, like, you know, if you walked into a Hot Topic store or somewhere in the mall or anywhere, like, pop culture stores, they have tons of this stuff. Um, but back when I was buying this, I went crazy because you couldn't really find this stuff at the time, so it was, like, my one chance. You couldn't get it on eBay either. People weren't flooding eBay with this stuff. So it was, like, this treasure gold mine of rare Studio Ghibli merchandise. Tons of miniature little keychains. I think these were only a couple bucks each, too. Cute little leaf uh, tag. Another little tiny Kodama. Put these on the side. Oh, this is... I don't remember the name of this movie specifically, but this is one of the exclusive movies that I saw there. With this little egg. Yeah, I can't remember the name. But, uh, yeah. Legally, this film... These films that they released in the museum are still not available elsewhere to my knowledge. Maybe one day they'll release them. We got No Face Keychain. These were super cheap from what I remember, which is why I have so many of them. 
It's like a little bell. Uh, we got the witch with gigantic breasts from Howl's Moving Castle. My god. Goodness. I pretty much stopped collecting Studio Ghibli as well. Once I got back from the museum, I didn't buy anything else anymore. Because I was fully stocked up, obviously. For whatever reason, there's a couple of UMDs for PSP sitting in this bag. Uh, Zionide. Because when I would buy games in Japan, um, they would typically put them in these baggies instead of actually putting them in the case. So I guess these ones, when I was packing, kind of just wound up in here. There it is! Holy crap, I finally found... No wonder why I could never find this freaking game. Because it was in here the whole time, and I haven't opened this in years. So this is for uh, the PSP. Actually quite rare and expensive. Um, the Soldier Collection on PSP. The Shoot 'em Up series. I have the box for this. Somewhere. Just don't remember where. Now I gotta find the box, right? I find the UMD, and now I gotta find the box. I think I paid like 20 bucks for that in Japan, and I'm pretty sure that's over $100 now, if I remember right. Or somewhere close to it. Got another Kodama keychain. See, these are kind of cool to have, too. Pins for the museum, specifically. Little Totoro pin. No face pin. Even the packaging on these is nice. Another keychain of the little bird and rat guy, mouse guy. Spirited. Oh, apparently I bought a sticker for the Ghibli Museum. It's kind of actually a nice little memento. As though I didn't buy enough shit to remember this place, right? But, you know. Okay, that was that bag. That was a fun little bag. A lot of little miniature stuff in there. Yeah, so pretty much, since this was packed in Japan, um, my hands have not touched this stuff since I left Japan. <laughs> so. It's pretty much like looking at it for the first time. And right back in the bag it goes. I will keep the UMDs out, though. Alright. Because one little bag wasn't enough. We have a bigger bag. Let's see what's in this one. We got toys. Miniature figures. Kiki's Delivery Service. Love the box art on these. I can see why I bought them. It's like they're nice for display because the back panel is actually like fitting. Nice. Pocoroso. Not my favorite film, but these must have been pretty cheap for me to buy this. Like I said, you never do stuff like that I would never see in the States, so I'm like, this is my only chance to buy this stuff right now. Top three. Mononoke. Probably Spirit Away and then My Neighbor Totoro. Ooh, we got a whole bunch of little fuzzy keychains. My favorite one, personally. And the nice thing is, you know they're all official. Don't gotta worry about none of that bootleg stuff. Thank you, Jaws. Have a good night as well. Thanks again for uh, the 200 gift subs. See you next stream. 200 gift sub milestone. What is this? Is this catnip? No, I guess it's just a... No, that's a pin. I can feel the pin underneath it, I think. Anyway. More stuff for Kiki. More stuff for Kiki. That one's kind of cute little keychain. Plush keychains. I know someone in chat before mentioned they were like, better not see any Kiki stuff, otherwise they're gonna go crazy. Because I didn't have enough Totoro keychains, like, holy f... Even I could admit, I think I went a little overboard, but, like... It was like a kid in a candy store. It was like living a dream, honestly, when I went here. Um, so I went crazy. Absolutely crazy. 
The staff was practically laughing when I was leaving the store because of how many bags I had. Capus. What is this? Oh, this is a magnet. These are magnets. Okay. And this was exclusive to the museum because you can see the tag up here. It's for the museum only. So most of this stuff actually could be super rare. Kodama keychain. Looks like I may have bought two of those by mistake. I don't know. Um, what the hell is this? It looks like a book. I'm not going to open it. But it looks like it's um maybe a postcard collection for the museum, so I can kind of take a look through the museum as it were when I went before they did any kind of renovations. So it's just this... feels like there's a collection of postcard pictures in here. I wanted to try and get as much of the museum stuff as I could because I knew that was the only place I'd be able to get it. Castle in the Sky figures. I, I really like the backing cards on these. I have no desire to collect for these movies anymore, in case you're wondering. Uh, definitely over that. It's just something I couldn't keep up with. Oh! The, the lady at the counter, I forgot about this. She was so nice because I bought so much stuff. She was like, oh, do you want some extra little miniature bags to go with it? Check out these cute little bags. Mint. Uh, so I guess if somebody went there and only bought a pin, you'd get one of these bags to put it in. So, hey, I got some of those too. The collector in me was like, yes, please. I will take bags. Let's just take everything else out here. Oh. More bags. Perhaps collectibles? I don't know. Oh, this is from, uh... What the hell was this from? Oh, this is from the exclusive film that I saw when I went there. That I can't recall the damn name of, so this is some kind of keychain for that. Another Totoro pin. Oh, guess what? Another Totoro pin. Oh, this is cool. It's like a weird no face, like shiny keychain thing. I have no idea what the hell that is. I got one for Okadama as well. Cool. Sealed the tape, never removed. Slice it open. This, I have absolutely no idea what this could be either. It's something Totoro. As you can see from the box here. Nice box. Oh, what do we have in here? Whatever it is, it's super fancy. Holy crap. Wow, I forgot about that. That is cool. Huh. Really nice box for it, too. Check this out. Clear glass Totoro. That is awesome, actually. It's got a flat back, so you can kind of, like, put it up against something. And then the box that they put it in was really nice, actually. The box alone, I'm like, shit. I might keep that. Paperweight. Yeah, paperweight, you're right. Paperweight for a desk. Thank you. I was trying to figure out, like, what the heck would you use this for? Paperweight. I'm surprised I couldn't fit that on my shelf. Or maybe I just, like, forgot by the time I got back and... Just put it away for years. A couple more things from the museum. Apparently I picked up some books. As you can see, still sealed with the tape. So let's find out what the hell books I bought. Buying gigantic art books and then having to fly back with them. Probably not the wisest choice. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. I see why I bought this. It's a book on the museum itself. 
So very nice to have. I, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, why would I buy a gigantic book? It, ha it had to have been something that would be worth the, the weight to travel back with. Um, so yeah, it's got tons of pictures of the museum itself in here. Just something, you know, let's see if I can find you a good, good one to show. Like here, this is when you go there, I don't want to bend the spine too much, but like, they have pictures of, they have a recreation of what Miyazaki's desk looked like in the museum, so that's what they're kind of showing you in there. With all his notes on the walls and how messy it was, and yeah, just a, a good souvenir book for sure. Pictures of the outside, the inside. We got another book. Oh my god. More than one book. Several books. Children's picture books. So this is the film I saw when I went there. The exclusive movie that they were only showing there. Oh, that's right. These were all the other exclusive movies that I didn't get to see because they only screen one at a time. So these are actually like, I was like, shoot, I might as well buy these and read the book. Or look through the book because, you know, I, I couldn't experience these while I was there. So these are the little mini films that they only show in the museum. I just snatched them all up. I'm like, screw it. I'll take them all. Look at all the different films you can see. It, it, it's random when you go there. Like, you don't know what you're going to get. So I'll show you inside of one of these. So it goes through the entire film. They're pretty short. If I remember right, they're like 10 or 15 minutes. I don't remember. No, Rapid Fire, they did not. But yeah, scene by scene. So like, if I wanted to remember this film, because back then when I went, you could... Even pirating these films, even if you wanted to try and watch them illegally, it wasn't really doable. Uh, they're very strict with with these films. I don't know about now, I don't know if they're like accessible at this point, but yeah. Got one more box from the museum. Probably shouldn't have bought this one when I was there because it was pretty bulky. Once again, just to show, tape to show that it's been sealed since I got back. But I know what this is. Because they show you on the box. Styrofoam. Oh, he's cuter and smaller than I remember, actually. I don't remember why I thought this was so large. But it's the cute little white Totoro. It's a ceramic planter. So, it's a hole there. And then it comes with a ceramic base that you can put him on. And because he's my favorite one from the movie, you know, I couldn't pass up. It's pretty much like a statue equivalent for me. Nice and glossy ceramic. I was like, yep, that's going in the collection. And where did it end up? In a box for over six years.